Hi Unity devs and welcome to another update on the Unity UI extensions project and here we are reaching milestone 1.1 which there's been tons of work going on over the last month or so um, getting ready to just bolt to this next update so here I have my cup of Earl Grey tea nice and hot at the ready and let's get on and have a look at what we've got here so as I said, we've got a ton of new features. Uh, we've got a new polygon primitive, which allows for more uh, dynamic shapes being drawn in the meshes of the UI system. Uh, we've got the new UI vertical scroller, which is another type of scroll rect, which has a nice animation style feature for popping in and out, which we'll show. Uh, we've got a new curved layout control. So instead of just horizontal and vertical, you can actually curve your layouts on the screen to your bending it to your will. There's an interesting little shining effect, which sort of gives an example of how to analyze an animated shining effect on your UI controls and themselves. If you're using U, uh, 5.3 or above, then we've got an interesting first tab at a UI particle system. And this allows you to take a particle system and put it into the UI, UI layers. Um, it's not perfect. It's going to need some work to look at, but it's there as a first step at trying to do that. Uh, we also got an interesting scroll conflict manager, which allows you to control, control those situations where you have horizontal and vertical scroll wrecks nested within each other and trying to manage how they work. Uh, out of the blue, two can not completely non-UI components. We've got a new compression and a serialization helpers. Um, these were suggested by the community because they don't get enough impressions. Um, Basically, there's an LZT compression library so that will actually can do compression of bytes useful for both saving or for networking and also a, a serialization helper framework, which even I only found out recently that Unity does not uh, allow you to serialize its native structs like vectors and quaternions. It just doesn't work and you end up having to do horrible workarounds. So this library helps, helps you get through that without any extra writing at all. You just work with the library and it serializes it for you. Job done. And the last one that went into the gate, which was just today, uh, is a high DPI helper so that if you have screens with really high DPI, the event system has some trouble with scrolling across and can get a bit confused. So if you're having those problems, then there is a component there to help you with that. Now, as job days, there's been a ton of work. So the soft soft alpha mask <laughs> has been updated to the, the latest version that's on the asset store. Uh, I still recommend that if you're if you're making heavy use of this, buy the asset from Charles. It's a great control. Um, use it here to your heart's content until you want to go and buy it. I'll just buy it. Um, the line re renderers had a complete rewrite. Um, it's almost a new control. Um, been several people have been offering up fixes and also by popular demand it is now very programmatic so you can build lines through code and do a lot of manipulations and a few other extra things the horizontal and vertical scroll snaps have also had a fairly significant update with a load of extra properties added to the they can control it with and it's also a lot more programmatic in the way it can work the radial layout now no longer overlaps its first and last items Sorry if you're depending on that, but most people ask to have it to work properly. And the scroll snaps themselves also redistribute better for resizing or adding and removing a pages. So you can see there's a lot of work done to try and make sure that works just right. Had a lot of fun with that one. Right, let's jump to Unity and then see what we can see. Right, so first let's have a quick look at the polygon primitive. So here we are, Oops. go to Game Object, UI, Extensions, Primitives. And here we have the new Polygon Primitive. Uh, we can adjust how many sides this has got. Uh, we can adjust its rotation. And rather more interestingly is that for each of the vertices for that have been drawn here, we can actually manipulate them as, as well. So you can play, do you like, have fun. Let's get rid of that. Have a look at the quick shining effect. Now this works with any UI object, doesn't have to be one of the extensions. So if I add say an image, I've got a nice little sample image down here, I should go throw in, it's the galaxy. 
And then if I simply add in my shining effect, I have it here already. Uh, then what I can do through animation or however you, or through code, simply adjusting the offset and having a little shining effect. You can obviously affect, change the width of what this effect is. And if you wish, you can also change the effector. So if you look down here, uh, you can set how it's masked, what image it uses for it. And there's lots you can do it, do with this play. I'll do separate, like with everything else, I'll do separate videos on a lot of these. Right, so let's have a look at the, the more serious things like the, let's do a new scene. We have also got the new UI. No, I don't want to do a new project. <laughs> new scene. And let's have a look at the UI vertical scroller, which uh, a lot of people have been asking for something like this. So let's see what people think of it. And here we are. And all this is, if I run this project now, is a nice little rotating wheel. It's only vertical at the moment. So if anyone wants to go and work at making a horizontal one as well. But as you can see, nice little popping animation effect for the central item, which few people ask for. And the author as well, apologies, I'm not going to try and pronounce the name because they come with the written from the Far East. And if I look in here, so the Unity UI extensions in layout, UI vertical scroller and scenes, there's a lovely little sort of calendar style control, which they put together. And if I run this, in fact, if I run this full screen, yeah, there we go, run this full screen. Then you can see it's nice little rotating clocks just for working on the date. And you can set the time of things. Very fantastic. Uh, a huge contribution. Um, they've got a donation link on the page as well. So if you really like this and you're using it, by all means, donate them as I recommend to any of, the, any of the people who are actually offering up donation links. A lot of people put a lot of hard time and work into doing these. So let's have a look at some of the other little more fun things. So in the line render, as I said, it's a lot more programmatic. It's, it's a lot more programmatic than that now. So I'll put this little sample scene together here. So if I can add zero, 100, actually. Sorry, I do need the inspector on this one. So let's try that again. So I add 0, 0.0, let's add 100. We should go and draw a line over there. So as you can see, this, this is all done through code. There's code behind in all these. And let's put that to zero. And so a nice little box. Now, if I look at the line render and control now itself, um, you should be able to see that there are lots more options here to be able to configure. So as usual, we can see how many points are in there. We can take, set to relative size. So you can see this is now way off the size of the screen or it's within the control itself. Um, one thing that was hardly added was a, a line list. So now you can set up pairs of lines that will be drawn together. You can put caps on it. So you can see it's put round the caps. Uh, you can set how the joints do. So whether you can see I'm pointing the screen, that's not going to work. Whether see it's tight corners or whether it's beveled joints. And also by popular demand, we can even do Bezier curves, which has a few modes. There's a quick and dirty, just cheap way. There's a basic way where we can basically control how many lines and points in it and what basically what precision we want this curve to work in. And then there's a slightly more improved method. Now, the only two differences there is that it's just how they draw and what the potential performance impacts might be. Try it, see what you think about it. So that's the improved line renderer. There's tons more in there, too much to go into now. Uh, if we have a look at the scroll snap controls, again, these have been made a lot more programmatic. And there's been a few requests for how some of the other features work. So here I've got a vertical and horizontal snap. You'll notice now that as well, you can control the distance between the pages, which was asked for a lot. So it's not just on the page. Uh, people asked what the pagination option was for, and this is it. So it can link to a set of toggles. And as you can see, as I'm changing pages, change what toggle. Granularly, that would be a set of dots underneath the page, what you're even going to do. And also, if you change the toggles, nothing happens. <laughs> because I've, I've not added any code into that to actually change the page, which you can do. And again, it can do by buttons. Now, some people noted that 
scroll bars don't work well with these. Uh, our recommendation is don't use scroll bars with scroll snaps. The whole idea is that it's swipey or it's button controlled, not through a scroll bar because it causes problems. We can now also add more pages. So if I if I if I, if I go to the end of here, uh, go to the end. So I can add new pages and works. I can remove pages. Can't see the numbers because it's there. And you can even say jump to page three. There we are. I'll jump to five. Oops, not 56 because it won't work. And it'll jump to pages. So that's a lot of work on the scroll snaps. Uh, the scroll conflict manager uh, is an important one to note. So here I have a horizontal scroll snap going that way. Inside there, I've got a vertical scroll snap here. I've got another horizontal scroll snap here. So a real big complicated mess. And if I run this now, this hasn't got the conflict manager on it at all. You see that um, while I can scroll there, I can't scroll here because all I can, that is a vertical stroke snap and that's horizontal. Even though this is within it, it can't work. And here I can do that. But if I try to go up and down, it doesn't work. So if I very quickly add on here, the, uh, oh, I can't type. There we are. Can I can tell it and tell it who its parent is? So it's this one. I right, quickly add it here. Do the same again. This is its parent. And now, if I run this, rather interestingly, is that. I can scroll here, I can scroll here, and go up and down here, and go here, or I can go up and down here. And it all just works. Obviously doing that, that only fix that when you can't do both. That's just because this is parented to here, that is parented to here. So not sure what would happen if you did the other way. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all we've got to show you for now for the update. Uh, there is tons more in here, so as you saw from the notes. Um, feel free to post any questions to me and for this release uh, a few sort of bigger announcements so i will be packaging this and putting this on the store so if you like the entire thing packaged together then please buy it on the store you no way committed to uh, it's just your way of sort of donating to the project to help get together i do a lot of work with putting these videos together packaging the solution getting the scripts in testing them it's fun. I love the community for everything you submit and everyone who puts through, but it's a lot of work to manage this project. So it's just for me. But if you're really liking any of the individual controls, by all means also contribute to the individual controls people. Um, this project wouldn't be alive with a lot of those, or at least it wouldn't work it as fast because I don't have as much time. T. So. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for all your support and um, like and share and uh, speak on the webs. And last point I should point out now, I've done a bit more effort there. So there were, obviously, I'll, as well as the YouTube channel, there's now the uh, Facebook page. And also I'm trying to call out to the, the Twitter hashtag of uh, hash UI extensions. So if you want to get news and updates about what's happening, because quite a few people had a problem sort of getting in touch with me or anyone else working on the project to talk about things, making more channels available to make that possible. So reach out, comment on YouTube, comment, preferably comment on the Bitpocket page because then there, everyone can see. But there's also the Facebook page and the Twitter account for you can see where there's updates. So like, share, and I shall see you in the, on the future updates. Bye bye.